Hey guys, it's Ty and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about the reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. This is a young adult mystery. It is a new release for this year. It is one of my most anticipated reads for the year. So I was super, super, super excited to get to this. So let's get started. So in the reappearance of Rachel Price, we are following our main character, Belle. She is about 17, 18 at the time the story starts. She's a senior in high school and she is living with her father, Charlie. So Belle mother Rachel has been missing for 16 years and at the time of her disappearance Belle is technically the only witness because while Rachel and Belle were in the car driving Rachel is taken from the car and never seen again so there have been a lot of theories into what happened to Rachel but mostly a lot of people assume she is dead including Belle and Charlie so when the book starts Belle and Charlie have agreed to participate in a documentary that is centered around Rachel's disappearance they have been interviewed by the film crew the film crew is also interviewing other members of the family that have been going to different locations for example Belle's school to interview like teachers and students because of Rachel used to be a teacher there and so they're just doing what documentary crews do so one of the days that they film they are doing a reenactment and so right in the middle of them filming this reenactment Rachel is seen walking by Belle and Rachel is not in the best condition she's like all disheveled she's bleeding Belle doesn't really know what to do with her feelings upon seeing Rachel because she had a tough time growing up without her mother obviously and without knowing what happened to Rachel. So there are a lot of questions that Belle has for Rachel. The story just centers around Belle trying to figure out what happened during Rachel's disappearance, what truly happened that day she went missing, and what her intentions are now that she's back. I rated this book two stars. I did not like it at all i'm surprised that i was actually able to get through it because there were several moments that i wanted to dnf but i was like no it's got to get better it's got to get better that's what i kept telling myself and it did not get better so i was really anticipating this book because i love holly jackson i consider myself like a holly jackson stan every other book that i have read from her i have really enjoyed so i was the one that started off with her a good girl's guide to murder series I have a video that's discussing that entire series i also read the prequel to that i have a video for that and then I read her release that came out not last year I think it was a year before five survive and I actually really enjoyed that and I have a video for that as well so I will have all of those linked down below in case you guys want to check those out so I went into this with really high expectations I thought it was going to be yet another book that I enjoyed by Miss Holly Jackson and unfortunately it was not so my first problem with this is the pacing the book just felt really slow in the beginning it was really slow because we are given a lot of background into rachel into um what they feel like happened to her and then we were getting a lot of uh feelings from Belle in regards to how she's been like coping with it and it just felt very slow and for a little bit once rachel reappeared the pacing kind of picked up but then it slowed down again it just felt like we were in a lot of the scenes for a little too long like everything just felt long this book is 430 pages and let me tell you i felt every one of those pages i think this book was just entirely too long i did not care for our main character Belle. she was not nice she um was very sarcastic and like passive aggressive and it's trying to it it tries to explain it as though like she just has a hard time connecting with people because of her mother's disappearance but i just did not like her i did not connect with her and because i did not like her and her like personality i just did not care about anything that she wanted and all she wanted was answers from rachel but i just i did not care i wish we could have got the story from somebody else and not bell or if bell just came off as like a different type of person because i did not enjoy reading the story from her perspective. Also, I did not like the ending. I did not like the ending of this book. It left me with more questions than answers and I was not satisfied with how this book ended. So that's all that I can tell you guys without going into spoilers. But for me to really tell you the things that I disliked, I am gonna have to talk about spoilers. It's not something that I do a lot, but I have to get my feelings out for this book because a lot of the stuff that happened and a lot of the explanations that we got just did not make sense. If you guys uh, plan on reading this book, 
I would suggest that you skip this part and you come back because I am going to jump into full spoilers. I will make sure to leave like a little spoiler thing at the bottom so nobody is confused, but we will be talking about spoilers. Okay, so my first thing that doesn't necessarily have to do with like the ending in particular, but it's like throughout the entire story, Rachel was gone for 16 years. And in my opinion, I don't feel like these people ask this woman enough questions. Now, even though I did not like Belle, I did agree with her being skeptical because obviously I have not been in this type of situation. So I don't know how I would really feel if a member of my family has gone missing and then reappeared. But I know me and I do know that I would have a lot of questions like, You've been gone for 16 years and you just walk on up in here like everything's fine like lady where you been that would have been my first question where have you been what happened and Belle was questioning her and the reason why she was getting more suspicious of Rachel is because there was inconsistencies in her story which again I agree with like I'm going to be asking these questions and if something's not adding up I am going to be suspicious of you but Everybody else did not seem that concerned with this woman's reappearance. Like the police weren't asking a lot of questions. Charlie wasn't really asking a lot of questions. And I'll get to that in a second. And like other family members weren't asking a lot of questions. I just would feel relieved. Yes, you're back. I'm happy you're safe. I'm happy you're not dead. But I have some questions. Like what happened? My biggest complaint about this, what I mentioned before, is the ending of the story. So what we do is we find out that Rachel was being held hostage. And she mentioned that in the beginning. So that is something that she she said. She said she was being held hostage. She didn't know the person that was keeping her. And one day after 16 years, this person just decides to drop her off along the street and she was able to walk back home. But we find out that Belle's father, Charlie, Charlie's father, which is Belle's grandfather, is the one that was holding uh, Rachel captive. And so the reason why he was doing that is because Rachel was being controlled by like Charlie. He was uh, not very nice to her, making her feel like she was losing her mind. And so Rachel was planning an escape. Charlie found out that Rachel was trying to leave her. So he got his father, basically he blackmailed his father into taking Rachel. The reason why he blackmailed his father is because he saw his father kill his mother. So because he wanted Rachel dead, he got his father to do it. But instead of killing her, her father actually just kept Rachel like locked up in this like storage container. That's how I took it when it was being described, like in this like yard. So she was locked up in this thing for 16 years by her husband's father. So, okay. The things that was described that Rachel went through with Charlie just did not sit well with me because it wasn't enough for me to think that he would want this woman dead. Like, why would you all of a sudden like want to kill your wife? Like to me, unless I missed it, I did not feel like we got enough explanation on what the heck Charlie, why, like why Charlie wanted her to die. Now, my other problem with this is that Charlie's father, the grandfather, he just all of a sudden got, not all of a sudden, but he has dementia. So of course, when all of this is being explained at the end, nobody can really be mad at the grandfather because all of a sudden he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember what happened to Rachel and all the things that he did to her. So we just conveniently can skip over this grandfather. Right. So then there's like a part of the story where Charlie goes missing. So while Rachel is back, Charlie goes missing. Belle is distraught because of course she's not that close to her mother and she's being very suspicious of her mother. She thinks that something strange is going on because now her father is missing and nobody is taking this serious. Like her, the police aren't taking it serious. Other family members aren't really taking it serious. The police eventually start looking into his disappearance reluctantly and they find out that like his passport is missing. He had packed a bag and so they just think that he went on the run. But why? Why would he do that? Nobody was asking a lot of questions because if his wife, who has been missing for 16 years all of a sudden comes back and she's alive and well 
I would think that the husband, Charlie, would be happy about this. He would be happy that his family is back together. Now, he might have some questions, as one should, but I would think that he would be ecstatic, not run off and run to the border. Like, why would he do that? And so it just really irritated me with the police in this story because they just were not doing their job. So come to find out, Rachel was upset with Charlie as she should be because he had his father lock her up and Rachel actually locked Charlie up in the same place that she had been locked up. So when we get this big reveal about what happened, Belle had found out that her mother was leaving clues in books that her grandfather was allowing Rachel to read. And so when Belle found that, her and like one of the camera people that she started kind of liking, they went and found out where Charlie was. While they're down there, Rachel gives this long spiel about what actually happened to her. And that's another thing that I don't really like. I don't like when we get these like long monologues where somebody is just explaining everything that happened instead of it like slowly being revealed throughout the story or we're getting like these like little reveals and twists we're getting this long monologue that's like pages long of someone explaining what happened so that's basically what Rachel did she just explained how she was trying to get uh, away from Charlie and how she was being kept down um in this container thing and so we get that long explanation and they're just all sitting here listening to it so then it comes out that Rachel was pregnant while she was being kept. And so through the whole story, one of the people that Belle is closest to is her cousin, Carter. And so Carter uh, really took a liking to Rachel. And you could tell that Rachel was um, kind of uh, soft with Carter. And so she reveals in this long monologue that Carter is actually her daughter. So what happened was, while she was being held in this storage container, Rachel gives birth to Carter. And because nobody is supposed to know that she is down there, the grandfather then gives the baby to his son because his son's wife is not able to have kids. So he's like, oh, here's a baby for you that I have. And I got it from, I think it was like some immigrant that he claimed he got the baby from and told his son that, oh, don't worry, the baby is gonna look just like our family. And so the brother was just like, sure, we'll take the baby. And that's where Carter is. And so my, I have a lot of questions about this whole thing because Rachel was kept down in this container thing. And she was not in very good condition because she's not being fed a lot. She she doesn't have access to like sunlight. Like the girl is struggling down here. And you mean to tell me that she was able to give birth without having like any medical attention and the grandfather delivered the baby? Now they didn't go into a lot of details. They just said that she delivered a baby. But how? How did she survive that? Nobody, nobody found this out. And then... My other problem is the brother, the one that got the baby, you don't have any questions. You don't question like, I don't know, where did this baby come? Did you steal the baby from someone? Like, how does the baby, how is the baby gonna automatically like look like our family? There are so many questions that just did not get answered. And I'm just shocked that these characters did not ask these sort of questions. So while we're getting this information like another thing that just sent me through the roof is that carter eventually shows up and it's told to her that yeah rachel is your mother and carter's like yeah i know because i just felt this connection with her and so i did my own dna test so i already knew that she was my mother i've been trying to tell you Belle, but you won't listen what what on god's green earth like what would make you all of a sudden do a DNA test and like nobody knows? So there was a scene where like <laughs> Belle woke up to like Carter in her face because they used to like spend, a, Carter used to spend the night all the time at Belle. So uh, they used to, I guess, I don't know, sleep in the same bed. And so uh, Belle woke up to Carter like in her face and she kind of like felt, I guess, like a little pain in her mouth. And so Carter explained, oh yeah, that time you woke up and I was like standing over you. I had just swabbed your cheek. So that's how I was able to do the DNA test. 
what? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I mean, I guess, I don't know. Like, I know who my parents are. So I guess if I didn't know who my parents are and I just had a connection with them, that would make me take a DNA test. Like, you see how crazy that sounds? So while Rachel is telling this to Belle and Charlie, while Charlie is like locked up in the storage container and he's all angry, the brother comes. I think the brother's name is like Jeff. And so the brother is like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. I didn't know Carter was your child. And so he's acting like he's just confused. And so he decides that he is going to try and free Charlie. Rachel, Carter, and Belle are running away from Jeff and Charlie because Charlie got out. And so now he's feeling like he has to go and get them for locking him up. And so there was like a tussle and long story short, Charlie and Jeff fall over a cliff because they were out like in the woods. Cause remember that storage container thing was like out in some dockyard or something like that. So they fall over a cliff and presumably die. And so Rachel is just like, um, you guys go back to the house. She's talking to Carter and Belle. She's like, you guys go back to the house. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna move their bodies and we're gonna take care, I'm gonna take care of this mess. So she ends up going to go get their bodies and like dropping them down like a mine shaft, I think. And so the brother Jeff actually died, but Charlie was actually alive when she went down to the cliffs to get them. So when she dropped them down the mine shaft, that is actually what killed Charlie. Hmm. So they get back home. They are trying to act like everything is normal. And then the auntie, so Jeff's wife, so Belle's auntie, the one that has been raising Carter as if she is her own. She comes and she's like, what happened? Where is uh, Jeff? I haven't seen him in a couple of days. Uh, he's missing just like Charlie was missing. And so Rachel just takes it upon herself to tell her, like, I know what y'all did. Y'all were raising my baby and it's best if you just skip town. And that's what Sherry does. She skips town. And do you know what the police did? Nothing. They did absolutely nothing. Instead of looking into what happened to Charlie, Jeff, and Sherry, they just chalked it up to, oh, they must have skipped town. And so Rachel basically got away with murder. And now she is raising both of her daughters. And that was the end. Like, what? Nobody is questioning them about what happened to these three missing people that all of a sudden went missing at the time that you came back. It makes absolutely no sense. This book, the ending of the book, sent me to the moon because I just could not get behind all of the stuff that happened. I could not get behind all like the little conveniences, like the grandfather having dementia so he doesn't remember. So they're not gonna like hold him responsible for anything. And Rachel basically getting away with the murder of Charlie and nobody questioning these disappearances. I did not like this story. Now, am I gonna give up on Holly Jackson? No, I think this might just be a book that just did not work for me. But yeah, I did not have a fun time with this. I did not enjoy a lot of it. There were a couple of scenes that I thought was a little funny. Um, we had this like family scene where Rachel is having dinner with the family for the first time and there are like a lot of passive aggressive comments being made by like Charlie and Belle and it's just a really awkward situation and they're trying to film it for the documentary and I didn't mention this but the documentary was still happening but instead of it being called the disappearance of Rachel Price it's called the reappearance of Rachel Price and so they were asking her a lot of questions but besides that I just this story just did not work for me in the way that I wanted it to. But if you guys are interested, after all of that, by all means, please pick the book up and check it out for yourself. But that's all that I have. If you guys have read this book, please let me know what your thoughts were down below. But other than that, I will see you guys next time. Bye.